The Banu Merchantman um, is an interesting one for us. It's been around for a long time. People are waiting. Uh, you know, people are really hoping for the ship to come out soon. And it's had some concept art done on it. You know, it's had first round. Um, and now that it's sort of going into production, it, uh, we need more, we need more time. We've done some investigations into corridors. I mean, for me, the sort of corridors are essentially the backbone of a ship. You know, you start with the corridor. From that, you then sort of work your way out. You know, it's kind of like the human body. You know, you just spread out and just, you know, everything attaches to those corridors. We have also a new ship, which is a Banu Defender, which is of the same race. So we have to keep in mind that those should go on in hand. Like we've shown some concept art of the merchantman with the Defender. And this is a ship that we sold a long time ago. So we have the same issues as some older ships, which is does it respect the same metrics as we, we have with the new ships? And does it still make sense like to have those, those guns those thrusters, those, those statistics for the ships, does it still make sense in terms of design? The Banu Merchantman is a really specific ship because it's transporting cargo, like some other cargo ships, like the MISC Hull series, but especially this is a trading and selling ship. It has a negotiation room inside. And if you have some clients, you can trade with them and sell them stuff directly in your ship. So you don't have to go through a third party like going to a station, sell your stuff. And the other important stuff as well is that unlike some other ships, you can land with your cargo on it. Like this is about the same size of the Polaris, even bigger, but this is not a ship for combat like the Polaris. It's kind of like a flying, a flying bazaar in terms of market you know flying market isn't it it's been interesting you know because obviously we've been dealing with a lot of very sort of mechanical hard-edged kind of styles and aesthetics from the other manufacturers the banu we're sort of pushing towards um a more organic more crafted uh kind of feel and this is obviously you know, obviously this is a challenge. This is going to be a challenge for the guys in, on the production art team to build it and sort of figure out how to turn it into a modular set. We did uh, a large amount of work on the Defender and so, you know, we're hoping to take the, um, the styles that we've established from that, the curved surfaces, the whole sort of organic nature of it and, and sort of transfer that over to the Merchantman. All the stats that we put recently on the website uh, should be up to date with what we want for it at this point. For say six guns at the front, uh, a top turret that is relatively hidden with size five guns on it. Otherwise there's no missiles planned and there's no other turret planned. All the guns on all turrets are remote, so there's no need to really look around or whatever. The Banu are pretty good on this side. And there's also the important thing about the Banu race is that basically they are taking the best stuff they can find from other races in the universe. So if they find a good component, they will put it on their ship. They don't really care particularly about history or archaeology or design. So they sort of, they take bits from other, culture, other cultures and stuff. And, but for us, we kind of have to turn it into something that's it's understandable otherwise it's just like it's a nightmare to build this is a really big ship art is still working on what it should look like inside because this is a new race we want it to be really different from the humans we have a lot of floors on the merchantman if you are at the bottom of the floor at, uh, at the bottom of the ship uh, you have basically a big hallway you can enter the ship and get higher. You got an elevator and not much else. After that, you got some shops, you got the negotiation room, but the negotiation room is more for the VIP clients. If you are a VIP, you can get in the negotiation room. If you are a regular client, you can buy stuff in regular shops. And after that, basically there's one half for the clients and one half that is for the Banu, where if you are an outsider, you won't get into the ship. A thing that we had to, to be sure about when making the Merchantman, when remaking it, is working with the writers and with the character artist to be sure that it was 
what the banu would look like. The banu race was undergoing some rework at the po- uh, at some time, uh, so we had to work with character artists to be sure that which size uh, the banu were. Uh. So, for example, if you put, if you do hum- human ships, they will all have the same metrics. Like, like when you make a house, they usually have the same doors. They will be this large, this high. If you make an alien that is way bigger, like the Vandal, obviously you can't make it the same way. If you make a ship for the Banu, same thing, it will be a different size. So this is one of the big reasons that the merchantmen got bigger, is that the Banu are bigger, well, they are taller than humans. The doors are bigger, generally, so everything is bigger in this ship. This is bigger on the outside, but bigger on the inside as well, and this is something really really different from any ships that we got in the game right now. The Banu as well have a, a weird um, social system where basically the crew live in a different place whether they are pilots or traders, they don't live in the same place. So we got some old concept art that we've shown to the public that we are keeping. The negotiation room is a very important point of the merchantman. But the cockpit is also a very important point because the pilots live in the cockpit. It's not like human ships where pilots will just go in the cockpit and then go back to their beds. Uh, to, in another room, basically, they sleep in the cockpit with the control sound and stuff like this. We are working with art, with writers, with character artists to be sure that this is correct for the race. Because obviously, when you make a, a human ship, you are thinking in terms of what makes sense for a human plane, a human house, and everything knows that ev- everyone knows how it works. But for an alien ship, we have a bit of a white card. We can do what we want, but we have to respect what we said about the Banu in the past. We can't really invent stuff just because it sounds cool. This is a really big ship, both outside and inside, for an alien race that is friendly with everyone as well. So this is a really important point as well that I wanted to put in the design is that the Banu are a race that trade with the Vendul, which is really special because no race works with the Vendul usually. Can the Vendul get in the elevator, for example, if they want to trade with the Banu? So this is why it got bigger inside as well. At the moment, we've made a new layout that has been approved the weight box has been kind of approved as well. We've looked at what would be the big issue in terms of animation, art, code, stuff like this. This is a relatively simple ship mechanically, but this is a really big ship, so we got the issues that we got. Like for the address, like there is a big open space. How do you be sure, how, how are you sure that the frame rate will still be good in those big open space? I think at the moment art is looking at it to be sure that it looks fine on their side and they are happy with the artistic direction that it will take. I really like this ship because this is a ship that is really anticipated for a lot of reasons by the players. This is a ship that we have not released any Banu ship in the game at the moment, unlike the Vandul and the Xian. So this is really important to be sure that we nail the look and feeling of the Banu ship and that we are sure that this will be great and people like this race.